Hi everybody and welcome to another tier list that you get to make fun of all of my opinions in Darkest Dungeon 2 for. Today we're doing a path tier list. Now, I already recorded this video, fun fact, and I spent over an hour recording it only to find out that my microphone was off. It is, it is working, I just double checking again. So I'm gonna try to power through it this time a little bit quicker. Uh, some things before we get into this. I'm not going to be actually putting all of these into a tier list. I'm just going to be rating them from S tier to D tier um, very, very quickly. This is going to be rapid fire. There's a lot of paths. I don't want to take too long doing it. So I'm not going to be putting them on screen. I'm just going to be showing them over here. We are using the wiki.gg, so shout out to the wiki team for doing awesome work. Do not use the fandom one. We have moved from the fandom one. It does say that that's the official one, but it is no longer the official one. That's a whole ongoing process. So if you need to use the wiki for DD2 do use the wiki.gg. And if you're enjoying Darkest Dungeon 2 and you're enjoying this content, subscribe to the channel. Helps me out loads and definitely helps get the videos to more people. I appreciate all the really, really crazy support the last couple weeks. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start off with Plague Doctor, everybody's favorite disease dealing, well, not disease dealing, but, you know, blight dealing, psychopathic doctor. And let's get into it. So the first one we're going to talk about, well, actually, before we get into all the past, I'm going to rate all the Wanderer paths pretty much a B tier across the board, B or C tier, generally speaking. There are going to be a couple exceptions toward the end that are on the new path system. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what I think about paths and stuff at the end after we've gone through all of these and kind of what I think they need to be going through. But for now, we're just going to rapid fire through all of these. And if you have an opinion that differs than my own, please go ahead and let me know in the comments because I want to hear them, right? I can take it. I promise. Let's get into it. Plague Doctor, Surgeon. So, Surgeon is one of my favorite paths. I think this is a really good path. It's enjoyable. Um, it does give her some, like, side grades. It's not a pure, just, like, stat buff across the board. At least it doesn't feel like that to me, even though it is mostly just a stat buff. But it is a different way to play her. I'm going to go with a B class here. Um, oh, and yeah, th by the way, this is how I feel about the paths, not just, like, statistics, right? We're going to talk about some paths that some people might really enjoy, but I think are really boring. We're going to rate those a little lower. Speaking of one of them, that's going to be Alchemist. Alchemist, I'm going to give C tier, right? It's just boring. It's literally the best path in the game outside of maybe Sharp Shot. And I would say that this is actually a better path. Statistically, stats-wise, numbers-wise, it is S plus class. But it is C tier in my heart because it's just boring. It is a huge buff to all resistances, a huge buff to all of her Blight-causing skills. And yes, it does take off a good chunk of her health, but it doesn't feel ingrained enough into her kit it just feels like throw play grenade throw play grenade once the back line's dead throw noxious blast done it's boring we're moving on all right physician this is actually kind of a fun path i think this is a good side grade and that's what path should be in my opinion though i think this is a really fun one it's a good you know it changes the way that you play her it gets rid of your ability to really deal dots and instead you go ahead and use like disorienting blast ounce of prevention all that stuff i think it's really really fun I do think, I do wish that it had some more play with binding, blinding gas and not just disorienting blast. I think like all of her kind of special or disruption abilities should be affected by this, but hey, whatever. I think it's really good. So Alchemist C tier, Physician, I'm going to go like B plus, B plus, A minus. It's fun. It's not crazy good, but it's fun and that's what matters. All right, let's move on. Highwayman, Rogue. Rogue, I'm going to give like a B plus. I think it's fun. Uh, but I think it needs more. I think it it just is like in the it's just like PBS Duelist Advance, PBS Duelist Advance, or you sit in the front ranks and just do Wicked Slice over and over and over again. I think it could have a bit more like of a dynamic feel to it, more than it just being like play front rank, do PBS, big damage, move back, join, go up forward, have some repost. It has that has to have more character. So I'm gonna go with like B plus, A minus, but B plus I think is a good spot for it. Sharp shot, we're going C minus maybe even d again statistically this is like one of the best ones in the game like i'm not going to deny that but it's freaking boring it's just a pure stat buff why does he need plus three speed he's already a very fast character right i know take aim got the speed taken from it but plus three feels egregious for a path that's already so busted right plus 25 percent damage on all the range skills i feel like there's a better way to make range skills feel more fun and like to use them more for this path without just buffing the damage like, I like the strength token on Grape Shop Blast. I think that's kind of an interesting way. You use a weaker attack to kind of AoE, but you get that strength token, then you can use that for pistol shot the next round or, or double tap or whatever the case is. I think that that's a fine way to play it, but just a raw stat buff is kind of blah. So we're going like C- on this one. Yellowhand, I'm going to go with A. I love Yellowhand. I think it's a super fun path. 
I think this is a good example of like, hey, let's use his melee kit and actually just make his melee abilities get some more utility without actually just buffing the damage to all hell, right? It does reduce his range damage by 75%. I don't know why the melee damage isn't down by 75% on Sharp Shot, but I guess that's just because they're less potent overall than the ranged abilities. Um, but you know, you get the debuff, you get the additional uh, vulnerability removal on Double Cross, you get the Highway Robbery, additional token take. I think these are all really fun ways to play the class. Uh, it really accentuates his melee skills, gives them a little bit of fun. So yeah, I'm gonna go with A, a on this one. I think it's super fun. All right, Man of Arms, everybody's favorite S-Class guy. Let's talk about his pass. Sergeant, I'm just gonna go with B. I think, I don't think it's terrible. I think it does have its uses, like the move case and stuff, but it is, it is a little lackluster. I think with the changes to bolster, I would love to see the bolster skills removing weakness and vulnerable not be a self thing, but be the, like something that he uses on somebody else. It kind of fits more of the whole sergeant, like I'm in charge here. Let me like rally the troops, get rid of your vulnerability, get rid of your weakness. Now you can go ahead and do stuff. Uh, I, I would think that that would be better not on him because again, sergeant isn't really dealing damage or even really tanking necessarily. He can tank, but it's not his best thing to do. It's more about like bellow, command, uh, bolster, things like that. Maybe a little retribution to pull a little bit of damage and peel off some tokens. And of course, a random defender now and again just to help somebody. But I think generally speaking, uh, I would like to see the bolster kind of change now that bolster has removed the vulnerable removal that it used to have as a base thing. Now they've gone through the nerfs. So I'm gonna go B. It's an okay path. It feels like a decent side grade kind of play, but it needs a bit more character, I think. Bulwark uh, and Vanguard. I think... I like Bulwark personally. I really enjoy him having like a, like having the effects of like stand fast with the additional taunt, the additional stun chance on Rampart. I think the big weakness here is just the damage buff. I don't like raw damage buffs. I think they're just kind of boring. And you know, this used to be 100% buff. Now it's 50% buff. It still does really really crazy numbers. I think there's just better ways to do it. Um, so I'm gonna go with like. It's like it's like a it's a a minus, but I think it should be probably like in C tier for f I have fun with this one again personal play, but I think it needs it's still boring like, but I enjoy this one. I enjoy it more than Vanguard, which I think is like B C tier or something. Again, it's it's a really good path. It's just not fun to play. It's just click button do damage. Like to me, that's not like any. There's no nuance to that. Um, and again, I don't really even know why it needs the additional health. Like, this isn't his tanking path. Why is that not on, like, Bulwark or even Sergeant, right? Why does his, like, super high damage path also have super high health? Like, it's not... just doesn't fit thematically. So I'm gonna go, like, C on this one. I really don't like Vanguard. I think it just needs more character, um, akin to how some of the newer paths are in the game. But hey, whatever is what it is. So that's gonna be Mana Arms. We're powering through these, man. I'm, I'm trying to go quick. Ravager, um... I don't know, it's it's probably C for me. And this is where we're gonna get into some, again, I'm gonna a lot of C tiers here, I understand that, but the boring, man, the boring. Ravager is boring, it's rank one where you're probably playing Hellion anyway, you get more damage. And one thing I hate, and I hate this on Arsonist too, is why is there a self-inflicted damage over time? It just feels so forced. And if, if it's on Ravager and it's on Arsonist, why is it not on Alchemist, right? Like, um, I don't know, or even on Berserker in this case. It should be on Berserker instead of Ravager or something, right? Like, that's her bleed path. Why is it not? I get the thematics behind it, but instead it could be, like, the downside of this should be more tied into the Winded tokens. Like, Hellion has this special token that really only has any, like, nuance to it on Carcass, which I think is super fun because it's part of her kit and I want to play around it. None of her other paths utilize it. It doesn't need to be a good way of utilizing it, but it should have something in it. Like, if you know, extra, like, you know, winded tokens do X instead of Y. Like, we've got special tokens on other characters, like the Duelist, that do different things on different paths. Maybe winded should have a different effect on Ravager, Berserker, and Carcass to kind of, you know, give it some nuance. So, I don't know, C tier. Berserker, I'm going B tier just because it is actually kind of a funky way to play her. Um, and I, I enjoy funky ways of playing characters. I think that gives things more character, more fun, more enjoyment. That being said, it's still really boring, and it doesn't do what it should do, which is that it should allow you to use her full bleed kit in one position, or at least like one suggestion I had was like, hey, why not make bleed out a move back move, and if it bleeds a move forward move on her bleed kit specifically, so she can move back and forth, but then it changes like what position she can hit, so she can hit the front rank, you know, bleed out, but then when she moves back, she can only hit the back two, you know, she can hit two and three, so you're not always able to focus on the same rank. 
um, but it lets you use the whole bleed kit like synergistically within her own abilities without having to focus on having another hero to move back and forth. Like this is her bleed path and I can't use all her abilities unless I have somebody else to help her move and her own move abilities like lock her in or give her more winded and it just feels kind of weird. So again, I would love to see more winded plays with this, like let winded be part of the kit. That being said, I think Carcass is, in my opinion, this is S tier. I love Carcass. I think it's one of the most fun paths in the game. It has a really unique attribute with the gain on crit de-stress. Like that's a super cool, unique thing that, I've, that no other hero has, right? Where she can basically negate the stress from crits or at least drastically lower how much she takes from it. This is like a true tank. She's a stress tank and she's a damage tank because she has her winded tokens that turn into block tokens and she can generate a whole lot of taunt because Barbaric Yop actually does give taunt on this. Um, I think this is a good example of, a, of like a subclass, right? This is a good side grade. It makes you play her differently, drastically differently, and it's super fun. But I'm a carcass lover, so I'm putting this in S tier. Moving on, Runaway. Runaway's had some inadvertent buffs to her past just through her own buffs that she's gotten recently. But our excuse me, Arsonist is going C tier, I'm sorry. It's a, uh, it's again, it's a boring path. It's just sit in the back or sit in the front, whatever. Just throw burning abilities. They, they pierce no matter what. They have a higher chance of doing crit, but it also has the weird random damage over time, which I just, outside of the occultist, I don't think it has a place. Like I get it thematically, um, but it's really risky and it just doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like counterplay to it or like something I can, I can do with it, right? I don't even think that she has something that's like, if burning, um, you know, do more damage or something. Like, that could be really interesting. Like, if she's on fire, she does more damage. Or she has a 1 in 10, like, maybe a 1 in 5 chance to get an extra turn because she's on fire and going around so fast. I don't know. Something nuanced like that could be really fun, right? Even the occultist has a, a trinket that lets him actually interact with people who are on fire. Now, I don't like that trinket, but it gives them kind of like a, hey, you do even more healing. If that person's on fire, you're going to heal them even more. That's really cool. It's interesting. Um, so I'm going to go with C tier on this one. Survivor is going D tier. This is our first D tier. I mean, I know there are Survivor lovers out there. And it's gotten inadvertent buffs with the changes to Run and Hide actually having regen on its first tier and its upgraded tier. But it still it just feels too niche. Um, the dodge is nice. Don't get me wrong. It's the same as having like evasive or something. A little, little worse, but... Uh, I still think that this needs more character, right? I would love to see this actually change something like, hey, maybe Cauterize, like maybe make this a full regen path and then Cauterize doesn't actually do a, a flat heal, but it removes the bleed and gives a really nice regen if they're bleeding, right? Something like that, right? Like make it a re like a healing over time focus, um, which could be a really interesting thing to have a, a hero that's a healer that's based like solely on regen and not just like flat heals or something like that. Like, hey, this one actually does a regen now, and it doesn't have a battle limit anymore, so you can do regens if they hit the, thresh the health threshold, but like, that's, is that better than a full flat heal that's battle limited? Like, that's a really solid, it's a good trade-off. I don't know if that's actually a good balance, but give it something, all right? And then uh, Orphan, Orphan's going like B tier. It's okay, I love the concept of it being like a path that changes depending on which rank you're in. I just think that the front half of it just doesn't work. Like the damage, the melee damage, I, I don't see anybody using it. Searing Strike still feels really weird. Ransack's gotten a nice little buff recently, but that's more about positioning than it is about damage. So I'd love to see this something like, hey, if you're using Searing Strike, because you can generally only use that in the first two ranks, right? Um, then, hey, maybe Searing Strike gets a special you know, thing if you're using it in ranks one or two, and then Firefly gets something if you're using it in the back ranks. Not just a, not just a blanket increased amount of burn either, because that also feels a little lackluster. So... Um, yeah, B tier. I mean, the Fire Sarder skill, giving a crit token, that's an interesting thing. Um, and can definitely be used for some fun, but I don't know. Overall, just doesn't feel super good. So, is what it is. All right, next one. Jester, Virtuoso, C tier. Why, again, this is just a raw stat upgrade. The, the damage over time, resistance removal is like... <laughs> It's negligible. There's so many heroes that can help you with this, so many abilities that can counter this, trinkets that can counter this. Um, it's just... In all honesty, I just generally find that, like, I'm not resisting the dots anyway, so I don't really feel like I'm getting much value. Like, this isn't really negatively affecting me that much, right? But the 20% additional health, 3 speed, and the really powerful Virtuoso proc on a random ally every turn, you know, 15% chance, um, those are all amazing. 
So it just feels like a stat upgrade. It's boring to me to play. Give it something. Like, give me some character to it, please. Soloist is going, like, C plus, B minus, right? It's a bit more nuanced, maybe. Um, you know, the, the speed debuff and the damage or the health debuff, like, feel really significant. But, like, I also don't know if the payoff is really worth it. I get this is supposed to be focused on bleed skills, but it's called Soloist and it doesn't really do anything outside of the damage which is useful on finale like I, I i get it it's supposed to be like a solo finale thing and you also bleed um i don't know it just doesn't feel great to me I, I think it definitely has its places but again it just feels like stats it's just it's just percentages and i dislike that so but in Hermezo, on the other hand this is like a plus like a plus maybe even s tier just from the fun factor like mezzo jester is super fun i love the idea of this like the music like makes them bleed. I always imagine their ears bleeding from the song, but like they get these really cool buffs. You know, they get the chance for crit, dodge, strength, block. Like that's really interesting to me. I would let maybe say that Battle Ballad and Playout should maybe have their own like set of things that like Playout should give block and dodge, and Battle Ballad can give um, crit and strength. Um, though that may be a little too powerful just because you can focus it a bit more but like it gives a bit more character to both of those abilities and lets you kind of focus on what it is that you want like do you want to help somebody in need do you want to give them strength like whatever the case is but i love the really wacky wacky bleeds from like echoing march and solo and things like that this is a really fun path this is a, a good subgrade that lets you play him very drastically differently you're not really focusing on damage directly but you can get some really cool bleeds and also get some really good buffs and it has good synergies with other heroes like um you know with the cauterize and with just other like ministrations and stuff like that you can use this with uh you know powders to get like even bigger stress heals like you you apply you know a powder to somebody who's high stress and then you heal them with inspiring tune they resist the bleed and also get a they get a four stress heal all of a sudden plus a 20 percent resistance to stress so i think this is a really fun path i like this one moving on leper we're gonna have some conversations about leper i'm sorry monarch lovers we'll get to you but it's not looking great for you guys all right tempest leper c class maybe b class because it does have some like actual nuance to the character which is like the debuff resist and the disease resist these are kind of unique i actually like these right they're not just like the regular i don't know they feel unique to the leper they work with his blind um I think those are kind of cool, but I, do, I dislike the raw damage upgrade. If you're going to go with a damage upgrade this big on a guy who does this much damage base, my trade-off would be get rid of the debuff resist and make it so he's guaranteed to be blind at the beginning of every round. Force you to play around the blind, because to me that, fa that feels like it's actually got some nuance to it. It's like, okay, I'm going to do huge damage, but I have to work, I have to get the combo, or I have to risk the 50-50, right? Um, I, I'm fine with the health debuff. I don't really care for the speed debuff. Like, the guy's already one of the slowest in the game. Is the speed debuff really that necessary? Um, yeah, I get it. It's to make it so he doesn't just wipe out the first rank immediately. But, you know, if he's going first and nobody has a combo up, then you're likely to gonna miss anyway if he generates the blind, which I think if you're gonna go with a huge damage buff like this, yeah, that needs to guarantee the blind or it needs to go a different direction. Uh, poet, poet. I'm gonna go like B plus. I actually quite like poet as uh, the idea behind poet, but again, it is a lot of just stat buff increases. But I think like the the move resist, the stun resist. Again, these at least feel very specific to him and what he's trying to do. I like the damage debuff. I think that's fair. I would honestly say go minus 33%. Really make it so that he's not a damage dealer. This is a tanking path. Um, but I, I do think it could use a bit more like again affecting specific abilities doing the new system and whatnot but i like this one so we'll put it there monarch d class i'm sorry monarch feels like one of the weirdest paths in the game and not in a good way it is it is so niche to what it does right which is that it's like he's kind of this like pseudo tank path when he's pseudo tank and disruption path when he's not fighting cosmic enemies, and when he is fighting cosmic enemies, you do the big damage. I dislike it thoroughly. Cosmic enemies are like the second rarest enemies outside of the sluice enemies, I would say. And um, it just doesn't feel very fun. If I had my way, I would rework this path to be full lean into his disruption skills, like break and bash, um, even intimidate maybe. Uh, like change those up, make it so that he doesn't do much damage and that he doesn't maybe you know, maybe he has full health but doesn't do much damage. I'd be fine with that. But make this more about just, like, him doing, 
like disruption abilities like you know really lean into giving break bash or whatever some extra utility and then i feel like we'd have kind of all three of his his skill sets he's got the big damage moves tempest he's got the tanky moves poet he's got the disruption moves monarch i think that would be a really good fit and make all of his abilities in his kit have somewhere they work within a path but generally i just don't like monarch d class sorry moving on Fight me about it in the comments. Occultist. Occultist has gotten a buff overall that makes a lot of his paths feel a lot better, particularly Ritualist. Ritualist is like an A, A-plus class right now, um, path. I think that with the, the changes to Weird Reconstruction, the changes to Cursing skills, this feels like a really fun path. I would almost say that he needs a more consistent downside because of how good this path feels now. Like, the, the vulnerability on him doesn't feel that crazy detrimental. And I'm not saying that we need to have, like, crazy detrimental things. But I, you know, for these side grades, I do want some counterplay. I want some, like, I'm giving up X in order to have Y. And the vulnerability just doesn't really feel like I'm giving up much. I'm just kind of semi sometimes risking taking one hit of more damage, which can definitely be, uh, you know, dangerous. And it is every turn. So it is likely that he's going to end up with two vulnerable tokens. But I feel like there are a lot of ways to counterplay that. Maybe that's fine. Who knows? But I really like this. I'm definitely going like A plus on this one. Warlock, Warlock's going like C, C minus. Again, it's just a raw stat buff. Like, yeah, he gets less health. Again, I don't think that's really that big of a deal. He's not super squishy to start with. Um, you know, and he's in the back rows generally anyway, especially when you're playing Warlock. And he just gets a huge damage buff. Like, the, his abilities do a lot of damage, and Abyssal Artillery just goes hard with this. And that's fine, but I just wish that they had some changes to how they actually worked, not just raw stat buffs. Because um, I think damage creep... And power creep in this game is a real issue with some of these paths so um yeah it's going c class aspirant d class uh <laughs> aspirant uh feels like a path that's been built around one ability just to justify that ability existing and that's anamnesis i don't know anybody who uses anamnesis outside of using this path i don't know why you would in general it's very very weak and the fact that this path has to give a 125 percent buff to it just to give it decent damage feels really 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 weird man uh this just needs some changes to it i i get that he has it should, he should have a path that really focuses on him being like up front and in your face and stabbing people i love the melee damage on this one um maybe it shouldn't be this potent again maybe give the skills some more like utility instead of just raw damage to make those melee skills feel a bit more potent um, but in his case, I don't know if the damage is like that bad of a stat increase. Like sometimes stat increases are a good thing to have, but you know, I just think the anamnesis thing feels really weird. So, uh, yeah, it's going in D class. I generally don't use it that often unless I just want to start stabbing some stuff, which is fun, but it's not like, it doesn't feel like a path. It just feels like I want to stab stuff. So yeah, whatever. All right, so moving on, now we're going to the new path system. So the Grave Robber was kind of um, posthumously or retroactively, not post, she's not dead. I mean, usually in my run, she ends up dead, but she's not dead. Uh, sorry, Shuff. Uh, we're looking at her. She's been changed retroactively. So her paths are on the new system, which I enjoy much more, and I think a lot of us do, which is that the paths actually kind of change her abilities, and they're not just like a huge list of things. Though that being said, they are still kind of on that system. It's just changed how it's displayed. So let's talk about Deadeye. Deadeye's going like C minus, like D plus for me. Um, again, it's just kind of boring. Um, it just gives some additional damage and crit to her skills. And the downside is her move resist, which is like mediocre. Like you can so easily fix that with just having one extra button in your you know system of like I'm doing you know, Throne Dagger and Flashing Daggers, or Throne Dagger and Poison Dart, and then I'll just keep Pirouette on me just in case I get pulled to the front so I can just ram myself to the back, or even Shadow Fade so I can get some of the additional, you know, benefits of ignoring dodge and, and whatnot with being stealth. I just think it's boring, so it needs some more oomph to it. Venom Drop, on the other hand, Venom Drop feels like a really fun path to me. I would definitely give this, like, B+, plus in my opinion, maybe even A-. minus. It feels like a good side grade. I'm focusing on her venom or you know on her blight abilities i get an extra blight ability i get some you know the fact that i can try to do the movement stuff and then get even additional blight piercing um i would love to maybe see that whole every time i get moved thing i get like a buff to my blight piercing just attached to her being moved let alone her moving herself um i don't know that might be a little too powerful of a dancing team but it could be uh, a bit more fun 
but yeah, I think overall, um, this is a fun one. It's not super good. I think it definitely needs a bit more dynamics added to it. Like flashing daggers is almost a little too potent when upgraded with this, like four blight on two people at the same time. That's a lot of damage, but you know, you do get the reduction of speed. So it's hard for her to like get this set up. Like she's very squishy and generally you want to make sure that she has dodge or something before the enemy team gets a chance to go. And with this path, you're generally not gonna be able to go before the enemy does. So that is the risk here. I like this one. I'm kind of good with it. Night Sworn. Night Sworn, I'm just gonna go C, blanket C. Um, the issue with this one is that it's just kind of a lunge bot, right? Like you just lunge, like Shadow Fade lunge, Shadow Fade lunge, Shadow Fade lunge. Obviously you can't do it that quick. You gotta throw in some other abilities, but like that's the basis of this one. Um, it makes lunge crazy powerful, which is fine. I don't mind having like the buff be as good as it is because it is locked behind stealth so you do have to work for it you can't just get plus 50 percent damage but considering how easy it is for her to get stacked stealth now it maybe needs to be tweaked a little bit i would love to see this have a bit more of an effect on other abilities um that actually yeah i just want to see a little bit more um on her abilities like getting changed and whatnot so it's c it's fun it's good but it's not like i don't know it doesn't feel game changing to me Vestal, all right. I got some issues with Vestal. I'm gonna say Confessor is pretty much gonna go like C minus. And the only reason is because it does have some merit. Hand of Light feels like it's almost a fun and good ability. Um, Illumination is pretty good on this with the removal of positive tokens. That's a really cool ability. That's a great disruption ability. And I think that's pretty good. The issue I have with like Hand of Light is like, why is it that it doesn't just do one weakness unupgraded and two weakness upgraded. Like there are other abilities in the game that do double weakness. There are some abilities to get double weakness and double vulnerable. Uh, coup de gras, for example. All you need for that is to just be in the right stance, which takes one turn to set up or zero if you have the right trinket. Um, it just like hand of light in all of her paths feels really, really weird. And with confessor, it feels even weirder that she has illumination um, and judgment, but she can't like you can't do judgment from rank two um you can do illumin like you can do both of them but i would like to be able to play her from the front a little bit you can't do hand of light and do judgment though that's the problem in my opinion is like you're kind of locked between and judgment takes so long to build up with the conviction tokens you only get conviction on turn start um which means you get one a turn one around essentially unless you have an extra turn given to you by again it's so hard to generate and all you get is you know for two is one weakness or two when upgraded and yeah when you get three you get like that double weakness and double vuln but the setup for that is crazy especially when compared to like duelist or whatever like it's just a lot of setup or even just like the curses from the occultist just feels like a lot of work and the mantra don't get even started on mantra mantra is terrible on every path outside of seraph it just feels bad on this they have to have consecrations which why am i running consecrations on this path i generally won't be because that's not what this path is really feeling like it should be about. Um, I don't know, like maybe this one's all about giving negative tokens, make her consecrations change and take negative tokens. Like if they have a consecration, it removes like weakness from them. I don't know, like give me something here, but the consecrations feel like I'm never using them. So I'm never gonna end up using mantra and the heal is, is weak. I mean, max 20%, but only when upgraded, come on, weak. Weak, weak, weak. Uh, next path is Chaplain. This one's D class, in my opinion. Uh, I think the setup, like this is supposed to be her front rank, kind of like tanky thing, but there's nothing that works with Mace Bash. Nothing upgrades Mace Bash here. It still feels like a really weak ability. And again, you need, she's so hungry for conviction tokens. If you want to do damage with Mace Bash, then you take away doing anything with Mantra, which is kind of the point of this path is to like guard people, and then heal them if they're guarded, which I get. But if you're using her own guard, you're wasting a turn guarding, and by the time you're ready to use Mantra, that person who was being guarded because they're low on health or high on stress or whatever is probably already used up the guard, just not getting killed um, because they're being focus fired because they're low on health. And then you don't have the guard to heal them anymore. And even then the heal is weak. It's a weak heal. Yeah, you get a little bit of a stress heal, but that's only with three conviction tokens. You get a max 25% heal. I mean, that's a, that's okay. 
Um, but there are other heals that do better that don't require all this setup. Like, it just feels really weird. Like, Mantra is set up to be such a cool ability that changes on every one of her paths, and it just doesn't hit. Um, so I'm going D on Chaplain. Seraph, Seraph, I'm going B. And, like, I don't dislike Seraph. It's just, it's just the fact that it, I mean, it, Seraph is a good path. It actually plays the way that it should. You're really focused on her healing. The mantra like pops off, but you get rid of really powerful buffs if you get if you use the mantra and you've got a cooldown of five on those. So like you can't use it all the time. Um, that feels like a good trade-off. The the consecrations lasting five rounds feels really good because you get a lot of value out of them. I think this is a solid path. I'm gonna give it a B. And I don't think it's bad. I just think, you know, a lot of people say it's too good. It's not that it's too good, it's just that our other paths are so crap that this one is the only one that feels like a viable option. Wanderer feels better than her other paths, in my opinion. And that's weird. It, it should feel equal, maybe, but better? I don't know. So, yeah. Sorry, Vestal lovers. I'm really struggling with her. All right, now we're going to move on to the flag. And the flag, I think, is one of the first heroes that really does it right. I think almost all of his paths, including his Wanderer path, feel unique. Um, they feel like they have purpose, and they feel well-balanced, right? I feel like if I'm picking Wonder, I have a very well-rounded version of him. I can use all of his abilities. I can use him in different ranks and get good value out of him. I can tank. I can do damage or blight. I can do healing with him. I, I have options, and they're all going to work relatively well. Really cool. Love that. I would almost say that his Wonder Path is an A-class hero by itself. Maniac? Maniac feels pretty interesting. It works with debuff skills, right? So it changes out how his punish and how his acid rain works. It gives weakness out. And yes, I know it's like it's only weakness one, but it also gives combo and upgraded. It also uh, can hit two ranks. Like this feel, this is a better version of Hand of Light, right? Like, yeah, I understand that like Hand of Light also only gives one weakness, but this gives the weakness one unupgraded and it deals like decent damage and it's usable from more ranks. And it also has the ability to give combo like this is just a better version of that ability and i don't like the argument of like this ability is better than that ability on a different hero because the argument doesn't stand up if you're not playing both heroes on the same team because like x is better than y until x isn't on your team anymore but it's a good example of like what hand of light could be um and why i think it's a lackluster ability um you know and you also get the knockback on punish like that's a really big disruption move you get like something very unique you lose out on the blight you're not doing nearly as much blight that you potentially could be or having the ability to apply the blight as easily um and you know sepsis works differently so it works with tokens instead of blight and stuff like that but that that gives it character and i like that so this is definitely a class i think examinate I think this is also a class. I think it's super fun that you have this whole like low health play style that gives you high blight. I would maybe, I mean, five blight when upgraded is pretty damn good. Plus you can really get that plus 30% piercing, which is a lot of people maybe dislike that. But if you're really trying to land these blights, that plus 30% just makes it stick. That's good. Like you want those blights to land. Uh, Sepsis feels really strong with this. I think overall, yes, a class. Uh, and then Scourge. Scourge, I think, is a good example of maybe what the third paths should be on a lot of heroes, which is just that they might not be the meta way to play the hero, but it's kind of just a fun way to play the hero. I don't dislike that. I don't like that. I don't dislike that it may not be like the best idea to play him super high stress and let him freak out all the time, get multiple toxic states and ruin all his relationships. But hey, if you kind of wanted to lean into the whole toxic thing, which I recommend doing at some point because it's just goofy fun when those toxic stacks kind of start going crazy, and here's your class. It works with it. It makes it happen, you know. Um, and I think that that's a really fun way to play him. I would put this one at B just because it's not as good, but it's still very fun. Um, but it is a little chaotic, right? Um, we have cut down this video by almost half, so I'm super happy with this. And hey, my voice is still working, so that's awesome. Duelist! Duelist is the new hero that's been added in the Binding Blade DLC, and I cannot recommend this hero enough. And I definitely think that she is the epitome of the highest level of what paths could and should be in this game. I think all of her paths, all four of them, including Wanderer, feel distinctly unique. Her Wanderer path has uh, a real focus on repost, and this definitely helps that she has these unique tokens that she uses her, her defensive and aggressive stances, and all of them having different passives, including the ones on her Wanderer path. But like Wanderer feels like solid damage, real big focus on repost. I'm gonna give this one an A, it feels really good. Instructus, really big on, you know, 
support abilities. She becomes a really good stress healer. She gives people extra turns. Um, she has the ability to, um, you know, get some dodge and stuff like that, move herself back, ignore repost. really good, interesting things. Her coup de grace works on execution and kill, and, you know, can clear all of her skill cooldowns so she can give people extra turns again, and it has a much wider range of damage, so she feels like she has some potency in the back ranks there. And then on top of that, right, the fact that her killing blows give her uh, regen or stress reduction means that her focus is on supporting other people, letting them get other people really close to death, and then she finishes them off and she gets a really good benefit out of it. I think that's really cool. A class. Antagonist, this is maybe the only one I put in B class just because I haven't figured it out that well yet. But I think it's still really fun. I do think Touche needs a little work here. Again, it suffers from the whole, like, it does a vulnerable or a weakness token, but when upgraded, it just does the same thing. I get that the upgrade also gives you the, to the stance tokens, which is really potent, but, like, maybe it should do, like, a, hey, when upgraded, if they're comboed and you hit them, then they get two. But if they're not comboed, they only get one. So... I don't know. I feel like there could be some some play there, but still, her ability to give combo, um, to give blind, her stun ability on this path is really like bar none. Like she can stun with the boot and coup de gras. Coup de gras also giving double weakness, double vulnerable. So I mean, that's a really powerful combination there. Um, so I would definitely say that this is like B plus. It's fun. It feels fun, and it feels good. And then in intrepid, again, I think this is a good example of just a class that's like. Um, it's just wacky to play. This is not the meta way to play her. This is a glass cannon path, but it feels really, really engaging. It's like, ooh, and those stacks get super high, you get super tense, you're like, oh, I'm at four stacks. Like, if I take a hit from a big enemy, she's going straight to death's door. There ain't no stopping, no collecting 200, go right past go. Um, but if she gets those hits, it feels really good. It feels like a really fun game, like a puzzle of like, okay, how many stacks can I get before I need to guard her or stealth her or whatever the case is. I love this one. I'm giving this A+. Plus. I, I know a lot of people think that it's not the best way to play her, and I agree. I don't think it is the best way to play her, but it is one of the most fun ways to play her, and that's important. And uh, and then we go on to our final uh, boy here, the big man himself, Crusader. I think his paths work really well. Um, I just don't think they're as flushed out as the Duelist, but they're still good. They have character. Even his Wanderer path, which again, I think his Wanderer path feels like his base who he should be. He's very well rounded on Wonder. You can move him in multiple different ranks. You can get different play styles out of him. You can do healing if you want to. You can do damage if you want to. And you're not really feeling like you're losing out on anything by doing it. Just a little bit of potency, but you still have the option to switch him up, which is always good. His aggressor path has some really unique interactions. Sorry, Wonder, I'm going to put in like B. Uh, aggressor, I'm going to put in like B, B. I don't really like this path that much, but I do enjoy how it interacts with things. I love the interaction with burn. I think that's a really unique way of interacting with things. Like instead of combo, they have to be burned. And on those killing blows, you get the stress reduction, you get that execution. Um, I think the healing receive debuff on Reap overall is just a really fun thing for him. But yeah, I, I would say that this is a really fun one. His tenacity gives him some really interesting options to keep him alive. It just I just don't think it feels I feel like it should be more of a damage path, and I think his Wanderer path feels more of a damage path because of that plus 50% damage on combo, whereas Aggressor feels like, I guess it's supposed to be more like killing things, um, but it's just hard to get him to the point where things are close enough to die and he's the one who lands the killing blow. So, I don't know. B, B plus on this one. Templar, Templar, I'm going A. The self-sustainability on Templar is super fun. Um, the, the, the stress reduction, the transferring regen, like with as many regen abilities as there are now, you can get some crazy regen going on. It's super funky. I would say um, tenacity actually feels pretty good on this, like giving people uh, a block token, giving them the ability to, um, well, giving himself block tokens, sorry, and additional healing received. Like that's a really good buff. Like he ends up like getting some really cool big heals so he can like tank stuff. You can focus healing onto him and he can heal himself up for a lot. Uh, I really like that. I, I think it's good. And then Banneret, I would say Banneret is A+. Um, th this is probably my favorite way to play him. The fact that you can do these support abilities, like Battle Heal being able to use from every rank, healing like <laughs> healing up to 30% when upgraded again, which is better than like a lot of the Vestal's heals. She needs some help, man, all right? Zealous Accusation being used in the back ranks, I think that's a really unique like twist to his path um, and making it so that it, he's a backline damage dealer. Um, I think the biggest one here is Rally and Cry needs some help. I don't really understand the immobilized thing. Um, Tenacity also maybe needs some help on this one, but Rally and Cry for sure. 
I think is the weakest one, but I think overall his support path is super, super good. So I'm giving you like A, A plus. And then uh, there's Bounty Hunter as well, but I don't count his professional as a path. That's just a passive on him. So I'm not gonna vote on it. I'm not gonna rank it. It just is who the Bounty Hunter is. So yeah, overall, I know that a lot of this was just based on my personal feelings. And I know a lot of people are gonna disagree with that, but that's fine. I, I would love to hear what you all have ideas for and how you'd like paths to work because I do think that the path system, especially the old path system, is very outdated. It is obvious with the Crusader and the Duelist and even the Flag and even the Vestal, right, that the development of how paths have been intended to work has changed. And I think they've really kind of started hitting the mark, especially with Duelist and Crusader. And I would love to see them. And they have confirmed that they're going to work on paths and go back and, and kind of work on them. So. Um, I guess my question to you guys is in the comments, like if you've got a path that you think needs reworked, like how would you rework it? How are you gonna make Sharp Shot feel better than it is and not just feel like a you know point click path? Or do you disagree with me? Do you think those paths are totally viable and should be kept? I'd love to hear your ideas because I know the devs do go through this kind of stuff. I'd love for them to be able to read the comments and get some ideas for the upcoming reworks on balance and path stuff, which we have been confirmed to have, but hey, this time the video actually worked. I appreciate you all watching this. If you enjoyed this video and you made it this far and you haven't subscribed to the channel, come on, subscribe to the channel. Helps me out loads. Also check out my Twitch stream. I stream Darkest Dungeon four days a week. You like Darkest Dungeon? You just watched an hour long video on tier lists. You probably like Darkest Dungeon, so you should check it out. But uh, thanks for watching the video. I'll catch you all in the next one. Don't harsh on my opinions too much. Bye bye.